in the context of uh, network management uh, we know that uh, simple network management protocol is used to oversee the performance of a network and if there is a requirement for changing the behavior then some variants of it can be incorporated that also implement certain policies as laid out by the system administration there is a term known as self organizing network it is a proper noun because it was uh, coined by duish telecom that is an operator in germany in the uh, next generation mobile uh, network alliance we are going to look at various aspects of it and we'll see what is unique about sons and how these can be understood in order to do some research into it because it is forming the basis of uh, self learning networks which alter or change their behavior as the network progresses with a varying load of users we know that networks became intelligent over time from being configurable to getting automated and uh, some programming was introduced in software defined networking for network function virtualization and this led to uh, automatic execution of certain policies that the system administration or the network operators would like to this has taken us to a completely different level known as autonomic computing or autonomic networking where the system becomes uh, independent this independence is uh, enough for a network to do fault performance accounting and security management at its own the goal however is to take it to a level where the network becomes self aware but we know that consciousness is not a virtue of computing systems so that dream or that goal remain uh, largely remains uh, uh, theoretical there are some uh, self organizing features which are available uh, to networks for quite some time especially in the context of telecom networks telcos which have a typical architecture of a base station a base transceiver mobile switching center a network operation center a operation administration and management center um, so in there uh, the mobile station and the base transceiver have a power control feature which is pretty much an uh, automatic if not um automated um system then the handover soft or hard takes place through a certain rationale or an algorithm which is prescribed by the network operator uh, similarly a customer uh, is recognized by subscriber sub subscriber identification module known as sim which contains the wallet and the payment uh, details of a certain user and the service package to which the customer has subscribed so we are aware that uh, this kind of um self organization or um, self management was already there in uh, telecom networks however as the networks grew the applications grew the number of users became very large their interaction with the networks became very complex so some some drivers or some motivations led to the evolution of self organizing networks the most obvious one is since manned networks are difficult to have no error because uh, the likelihood of human error is always there so in order to avoid the laborious man induced errors um some kind of automation would be required that immediately would result into cost reduction and uh, the overall complexity that uh, humans cannot readily fathom or uh, comprehend um holistically can be delivered to the machine so it means self organizing networks are value added network management orchestration mechanisms this would need even more automation even more programming 
So we are going to look at some intelligence for the networks to become more uh, uh, enabled to organize themselves without uh, human involvement. Uh, this also means that some kind of over-the-air programming or TAP or uh, remote uh, method invocation mechanisms should also be incorporated. This would require some communication, connectivity and computation and their blend. So, uh, as I said earlier, uh, Duish Telecom uh, in the Next Generation Mobile Network Alliance came up with this SON initiative back in 2007 which was adopted. Let's look at a brief history of it. Um, the operators which were uh, known once as the um, walled gardens uh, were making a lot of money but as the competition grew, as their profit margins reduced, uh, they came up with an initiative to identify the use cases where human element of error should be um, reduced. So th these uh, were expected to be automated because uh, there was a lot of human effort involved, these were error prone and uh, the nature of such use cases was um, complex. So these were put up to vendors because the hardware actually comes from the original equipment manufacturers and certain third generation partnership project standardization bodies uh, to, to look into standardizing uh, uh, self-organizing solutions. This is the basic uh, background or historical perspective to SONS. Today, uh, we see uh, SONS already deployed because uh, in 2023, most of the telecom networks uh, already have adopted SONS. Our purpose is to look at the continuous need for self-organizing that eventually leads to self-awareness, which is a, a highly cherished or yearned goal. Um, today, we see a plug and play deployment of base stations in telecom operators. Um, for that, the process is simple. The um, on-site installation is an expectation um, on the end of the um, service providers. So the vendor has somehow enabled the device to configure itself um, and do some software management activity in an automated manner when it is turned on. An example is uh, uh, the automatic neighbor relationship configuration where um, a base transceiver in, in 2G networks or uh, node B in 3G or E node B in 4G uh, becomes aware of the neighbors which it has to, to um, possibly reach out for load balancing, for, um, for um, interference control and uh, noise reduction, etc. So this results into uh, overall uh, better management and uh, the overall network quality as experienced by a user uh, also increases. So SON uh, was put up as a formal standardization activity in which essentially there are two parts. The first one is it was recognized that the way a typical telecom uh, network provider operates has to be automated because it is only through automation that self-organization can be implemented. So the workflow execution system is the first and integral part of self-organizing networks. Uh, this, uh, this includes a policy mechanism that is policy storage, uh, policy definition, policy um, enforcement points where um, um, the policy actually can be configured um, on the fly on the network elements. The self-organization uh, capability is implemented as, as a closed management loop. Uh, compare this to an open management activity where human involvement is something as the last call. But for network elements, uh, for devices, uh, that is the uh, network management and uh, uh, the overall umbrella management, um, this uh, closed loop, manage, uh, loop uh, management loop implies 
that the devices would not be involving any human intervention or are going to do some kind of device to device configuration, uh, orchestration, communication to come up with uh, an adaptive behavior that is the need of uh, the network at that particular moment. Uh, let's look at the manual uh, network operation. Uh, we know that everything starts with planning. Uh, so once we have the plan, uh, this plan uh, is put into, into operation and the continuous monitoring of the operation is done through performance, um, fault and uh, configuration management because on ground we have um, a hardware like uh, racks where we have um, telecom infrastructure like Node B, E Node B, Media Gateway with their own set of alarms, alerts and uh, uh, error reporting mechanisms uh, kind of uh, uh, sensing. And then actuation means um, scripts which run in response to those um, predefined set of uh, errors and alarms and uh, uh, failures. Then this is reported um, uh, to, uh, to the network optimization mecha mechanism that keeps learning this and shares this feedback with the human being. So this net manual network operation involves human being. Compare this to closed loop automation uh, where we have a network planning that of course starts with the human being but then uh, it becomes uh, pretty much uh, an automatic closed loop where we have the network plan uh, with its own set of policies. However, since we have uh, now identified two essential elements, the uh, workflow automation and the uh, uh, self-organizing network capability uh, through policy enforcement, uh, here we can see that uh, uh, the network plan is implemented in true letter and spirit uh, through workflows and the policies. The policies are enforced uh, on ground into the, into the network elements, the uh, domain, administrative domain and the overall uh, network uh, as, as, as an autonomous entity. Uh, so the human effort which was done once at the ab initio time or at the starting time uh, is now shifted to, to more uh, abstract level of planning. But on ground, the system is running um, almost at its own. So the experiences which are uh, now being learned uh, in um, um, network operations um, are now being shared into, back into the workflows and policies and uh, these workflows and policies are going to be um, uh, becoming part of the network plan. And the network plan is going to be implemented after um, storing it in some kind of repository. So you can see that the network plan along with the policy on how to manage and run the operations on the network is a closed loop activity. Uh, this uh, uh, lecture, and uh, uh, the subsequent lectures to follow have been adopted from a very beautiful book by John Wiley uh, back in, it was published back in 20, 2012. And the first author, uh, he's, uh, he's an accomplished uh, uh, network engineer. Um, uh, to my last understanding, uh, when I uh, knew of him, he was at Nokia, but uh, um, he started off his initiative at Doish Telecom. So we are going to refer to this book uh, in uh, all the associated modules related to self-organizing network.